fucked up, dude. An album like Pink Floyd, The Wall, or Dark Side of the Moon, when's the last album that you heard that's that fucking good where you listen to it all the way through? You know? I have to say I love Pink Floyd. The Wall was okay, but personally I like Ammo's the best. Oh, get out of yeah. here. Yeah. You're wrong. I used to like Dark Side of the Moon the best. I like The Wall the best now. How about you, Bill? Let's see, I'm, I'm more of a Piper's at the Gates of Dawn kind of guy. Really? So we'll, we'll, we'll add a different point of our point of view about Pink Floyd because I, what I like about Pink Ammos is I, that's that one album that I can listen from start to finish and not get bored. That's all I, I'm with um, Dark Side of Moon. But Ammos is, has a special effects sound with, with the Ammos, and I think that's fucking brilliant. So you're about the special effects? Um, That's what does it. No, I, it's just that one album that I, I just don't never got bored with listening from start to okay. finish. What is your favorite song off the album? Uh, Sheep. How does that one go? Dude, I can't... Don't do that to me, seriously. I, I can't remember you know, my favorite band, something that's how it goes. Outside, you know, a Pink Voice song, where is, you know... Stop. Here, lift up the mic a little bit. No, that that's not cool, man. L- lift lift up the... No, like, oh, like, you gotta go against the... Yeah. There we go. It's no. not cool to what ask you what your, what's your favorite song? Well, he says off of your favorite album. Uh, that's not my personal favorite album of all time. I just can't remember. You know, well, then all you gotta say is you don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm not. So I, I, I'm sorry, I got a little personal because no, it's okay. When, when I listen to music, I don't. I can't specifically remember what the one thing that I analyze I like, like about it. Sure. What I, what I like about it is I don't get bored from it. And just so you know, I wasn't trying to trap you. I was trying to get you to sing again. I'm not going to sing it. All right, well, what's your favorite band? Slipknot. All right, what's your favorite Slipknot song? Hmm. Had to be right in breed. How does that one go? I thought they were... Can't do it out loud. I feel... Can't do lyrics. I suck at it. Okay, but it's your favorite. With so me, that's your favorite. What? what? What makes it your favorite song? When I was seventh grade, um, I remember uh, seeing the video "Wait and Bleed," and I and I saw these these you know clown. He wears a clown mask. Yeah. And I thought that was the most badass thing on the face of the earth. So I started listening to them, and I just you know gravitated because of the mask. And I, and, uh, back what about the, ICP? Ooh. I just see ICP as a bunch of redneck hicks. Whoa. Why? Well, 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 in a good way or in a bad way? In a bad way. See, hmm. they themselves are actually opposed to redneck culture. And we learn are this they? in songs like Chicken Hunting. Oh, yeah. They they hate rednecks. Oh. that's. But they, they act like a bunch of dumbasses and they gravitate and they make money off it. Sure. What you just said earlier made me think of maybe your profound question. So Slipknot is your favorite band, mm-hmm. and you mentioned your favorite song. That's one of them. I by Slipknot. But what is your favorite song? Like, is that your favorite song ever written? Can you have a favorite song that's not written by your favorite band? Do you know what I mean, Ross? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? X I do, and that's hard to say. Okay. You're putting me on the spot. That well, let's. Well, it's a t- it's a tough question to answer, so it's it okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah. What do you think, Phil? Like, can you have a favorite song? a favorite song that's not written by your favorite artist? And I say absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, I have a lot of favorite artists because I listen to a lot of songs. Sure. So um, I don't. I, well, well, I I don't I don't know if I have a favorite artist, but I think th- th- a song that I always will always stick in my head. Probably the one that I remember the furthest back because it was like the one of the last memories I have of my dad mm-hmm. was before pre-dementia and pre-being drunk and violent. We were chilling on my couch and it was uh, we were just having father and son time. We were watching the live DVD of Pink Floyd and it was Shine On Your Crazy Diamond. Hmm. And I think it kind of like, you know, you know when... I mean, that's the 
joy of art is that when you personalize things, it means something different to everyone. You know what the song is actually about, right? Magic. Do you know what it is about, Russ? No. Well, it was about how when they wrote Piper Gets Done and then there was Saucer Full of Secrets, they had to get rid of Sid Barrett mm. because he was just being a kooky idiot sure. and went nuts on acid. So they wrote it about him. I don't know if this happened before or after, but they were writing an album and he came in the studio like 20 years later and he was like fucking, he looked like Homer Simpson. Because, you know, in the 60s, he was like a twig, looked like a beetle, you know, the mop top hair, messed up hair, and, and just, you know, uh, turtleneck, psychedelic shirt. And he shows up, he's got, he literally looked like Homer Simpson jeans, white work shirt, bald, like 300 pounds. And it was because of all, the, he just went crazy. He came out of it, and they're just like, we wrote it for him to shine on because, you know, shine on because life is tough and we're going to shine on as well. So it's, they sort of wrote it for him. So I took it as like, you know, shine on Phil, despite your fucking father's in there. And I'm thinking it shine on. It changed meaning over the years. It's like, Oh, I take it personally. Cause it's like shine on because you got, you got dementia. So do whatever it makes you smile until you croak pretty much. Sure. Well, the same thing with wish you were here. That's a ballad to Sid Barrett too. No. I, I'm not. I think so. It might have been. I don't. I don't remember if I read about. Did you know that that cover was an actual stunt that they had to like get the perfect picture? I think they got <laughs> one shot. You know, the the one guy on fire. Yeah. Yeah. They they actually had to do that. That's funny. Good for yeah. them. I yeah. have to say, "Why does by the stove by the dogs?" That's one of your favorite songs. That's, that's meaningful for you. Yes, because if it wouldn't be for the dogs, I would not be the metalhead. I'd be. Yeah, that's the one song I can. You know. I, I don't mean to cut you out, but I think every fucking person growing up, like in our generation, has like one 60s band that they're fucking in love with, that they will stick by it to, you know, and that's claw me. through fucking dirt with, you and know? That's me with the doors. And that's with you at the doors. And that's what you with. Uh, Pink Floyd. Yes. What about you, Bill? The Zombies. Really? The Zombies? Dude, I love the I th- Zombies. I thought. Uh, Donovan. Would, I was going to say Donovan. Donovan's up there, yeah. too. Um, zombies more than Donovan? Oh, that's a tough one. I heard the zombies. I, I don't remember what those songs. Dude, they're so good. They do the songs like, It's the time of the season yes, for yes. love. What's your name? What's your name? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? You know, that. And they're coming to City Winery soon. Or they just came and mm. went. But that's uh, that's a band that I really want to see because... They're not getting any younger. Yeah, yeah. Same thing, Electric Light Orchestra. Oh, yeah. To, coming to the Allstate Arena August 15th. Yeah, G- like, Gavin wanted to go to that. Fuck yeah, dude, I'm going to that. You are? You got tickets? I haven't gotten tickets yet. Dude, that thing is sold out the first day. No shit, five really? minutes. Yeah, no joke. Oh, that's shitty. Yeah, I'm not, I don't mean to ruin oh, it for you. I, I, wanted, I wanted to get it to, for Gavin. What are for you c- talking about? Electric Light Orchestra. What is it? A song that's all Take like- it to the moon. I don't, or uh, what? What else is there? Um, they like that's Gavin's third song. I don't really no, like do that. like Mr. Blue Sky, Turn to Stone. Mm. If you uh, heard it, you would know it. I, I'm positive they have a lot of good songs. Sweet talking woman, telephone line, like um, it, it's funny. You like the zombies, you like Pink Floyd. I always have to say that Jim Morris, the Hamas, I don't like. You know, the whole drug war, the whole thing. He's always been my favorite front man. And still to this day, and he's always with Jim Morrison was an alcoholic. He didn't really do a lot of drugs. You Have you seen The Dolls, the movie? Yeah. He was always on acid. I saw that movie last night. Well, he was, he was. The, I mean, alcohol killed him. Maybe that's what I'm getting mixed up with. Actually, he died from heart failure, which maybe was due to yeah. drinking. Yeah. Oh, okay, there so, you go. But, um... But what yeah, is, yeah, dude, dude, ELO, I got to mention, though, when I went on there 10 minutes after they went on sale, the only thing available was the VIP front row, $900 a ticket. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, Gavin's not going for that for one song because he only likes that ticket to the moon. Man. Would you spend all that money if you had that mo- Would you spend that much if you had the money? Hell yes. Uh, <laughs> maybe on Pink Floyd, yeah. not on uh, ELO, not for the me. Most I was spent for my favorite band, so that was $150 a ticket. Man. That's the most? Yeah. No, but like if you had money, 
Like, oh, if you had money, yeah, yeah if, if you had rich. money, like, fuck it, like, yeah, why not? Yeah, like, what's I, the most right now you guys would spend on a on, on a concert? Mine would be, if something that would be breaking up, it'd be two hundred fifty dollars a ticket for front row. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know the answer to that. I like uh, Common and Erica Badu are coming to Chicago, or they just came and went, but. Like that was hundred dollar seats, and I was like, "Yeah, I really like Common, but do I like him that much?" Yeah. Did I, let me ask you this: I, I had VIP tickets at Slipknot. Show I, off? I'm not trying to show off. It wasn't the best tickets, actually. <laughs> I was making a good. What do you think a good decision? I, I was right in front of the stage. The best tickets was four hundred dollars for a meet and greet, which you you have right, right in the in the mass pit area. Why would you want that if I give you my autographs? Let me finish. I didn't do it. And this before I, I, I met, you know, we started chilling. All right? Again? Yeah. They wanted $400 a ticket. And you, you've been to Tenery Park, right? Yeah. You know you know where the VIP section is? Those are Ab- exactly, above the stage, right? Yeah. Those are not exactly the best, you know, seats because you can't, you know, you're looking up, right? Yeah. And with, with, with the, you're always guaranteed to meet three members of Slipknot. Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, so we're up close and you know, you know, and get you know good ball, go to a ball, you know. And, and yeah, just, yeah. Did I make the right decision to get just the VIP? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like when when we, me and Kelly went to go see Jackass. Yeah. Obviously, she did not want to go at all. Uh, but but it was Jackass live, and it was just them doing stunts on stage and and you know being dumb yeah. and doing stand up, and it was like. Meet and gr- I think that yeah they had VIP meet and greet and I'm like yeah I want to meet these guys and greet them because because I'm sorry man I I was BMXing and skateboarding in high school that mm-hmm. and doing stunts and doing dumb videos that shit was like I still think Jackass and CKY is amazing I know people think it's like a bro thing I think it's it, you gotta have balls to do that shit I instead she- of stay home and troll on fucking online you know but we went to go meet them and guess what who if you went for meet and greet who would you want to meet Ross. Giant Knox and um, Wee Man, Wee Man, exactly. And who's the guy with the who always had the short hair? Bam. No. Um, Stevo. Yeah, Stevo. Exactly. Yeah. Guess who's missing? Who? Johnny Knoxville, Bam, Stevo. And, and his, Wee Man was there. Wee Man was there. Preston, the fat guy who chases Wee Man, okay. was there. Uh, David. I don't remember David. I think his name's David. I forgot what his name. The the guy who shits everything, shits on command. You know what I'm talking about? He he's he's he in the in the beginning of the, one of the movies it's like his ass is a hill. He's like he's they got a box building on him and then he has diarrhea upwards. I always yeah. seen the first two Jackasses movies, so I I don't oh. I, I I saw three in three D, which was great to see that shit shoot up How in your face. How was the three D Phil? It was fucking amazing. I loved it. it. Was it like was it like hitting you like a hard clam or was it like I, it was I mean, good? Yeah. It was good. I, I, I always question 3D if it's worth going or not. Yeah, it is. I saw Beauty and the Beast 3D. That was beautiful. I wanted to see that, but I'm a, I was afraid I was going to cry when the Beast dies. Oh, I cried. It, it was that emotion. With- Dude, the beginning, when they tell the story about the Beast, is the most black metal fucking thing I've ever seen. You you, you, you say black metal a lot. And when you mean black metal... What do like- I mean black metal? Uh, okay, so, so how else should I describe... A beast that looks like a goat head living in a castle in the darkness. What do I mean? Satanic? What word do I use? Okay, that's dark enough. And this is made by Disney. It, w- it was Dino Bosco enough. Yeah. It was Disney Bosco. Yeah. That's what that scene was. But but the, anyways, needless to say, it was kind of upsetting to do. And you know what else is bullshit? Those guys did all those stunts. They ate shit, right? I go to meet and greet, Wait, right? You're talking about Jackass, yeah. Uh, not Beauty and the yeah, Beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack, okay. yeah. So, so I go to go meet him, you know. Yeah. And what would you say to him if you met him? If I would have met Cody. Oh, Tennessee. and you know who was there? Party Boy. I forgot about Party. You guys remember Party Boy? I the, just remember we met. Um, he had a he, and, and he had a he had a tuxedo thong it, that he danced in front yes, of people. Yes, I remember him. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Do you remember Bill? Nope. Well, I didn't met, watch a lot of Jackass. Okay. Well, well, I, well, I, I, I met those. Guys. So I, I go up to Wee Man and I'm like, "Hey, man, for this photo, because you get a photo and it's signed, can, can you sit on my shoulders?" He's like, "You fucking seriously gonna ask me that? You seriously gonna ask me? No, no, it's not happening." 
And then like Preston grabbed me. He's like, dude, why the of all the fucking questions they ask, you ask him like I'm like, dude, are you are you kidding me? You, you got you got this guy snorting wasabi, you got this guy, you know, taping pubes to his face, and you're not gonna sit on my shoulders for a photo, you know? Like, whatever. It was it, did, it, did, it wasn't worth it. I did I did pay for the you know big agree. I just did you know the you know the the, the second best. Oh yeah, had. yeah. Well, you were smart about it. Yeah, exactly. Not to mention, I wanted to meet the guy who shits on command. That was yeah. my favorite character, because I I mean shitting on command is a pretty cool thing to do, and he was he does the stand up and then he's fucking he ends up being sick for the meet and greet. He yeah he, he they they said something like he's got to go chill in the in the in the fucking tour bus because he's got the flu or something. I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> or diarrhea. A- a- after, no kidding, he shat on a table on stage. I'm like, well, wouldn't you feel better after taking a fucking clay shit on the fucking table in front of everybody? I don't know. It was like actually my first year of going to Ozfest is the, uh, they, they were not black stuff. We were not going to go on because Ozzy had the shits too. Is that, what what going on with towing? Is it because like the Ian the one, the one shit, or is it like is that this? No, touring is a very very stressful thing to do. You only eat gas station food, especially yeah. if you're poor. You 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 don't get any sleep. You got to go from place to place. Yeah. You usually sleep on the road. And you you done that being on in your psychedelic band. How is it difficult <sighs> to sleep? In, in, I, don't I, know. I, I never had to sleep because we just drove straight there. Yeah. And then the one guy slept, you know. Mm, but, but I'm assuming driving, you know, sleeping like, like a bus is, it's not the most, you know, easy to do. No. Yeah. It's best you have Especially if you're in like a young band and you guys are pulling pranks on each other. You know, there's another thing I don't, when I see, you know, you know, smaller bands, they, they, they tow in a van. Yeah. I don't know. And I've seen that, you know, you know, in the interviews on YouTube. And I yeah. Think, I don't know how they sleep and i was like the, the people love music enough you got to drink enough of those beers that you got in front of you and, and i'm gonna give, give give one to uh mr bill here <laughs> all right are we doing a trade or are you donating we'll see what is, that means enjoy that, all right thank you much obliged so um speaking of uh book reviews and everything yes I, uh, it just reminds me of a passage that, no thank you I got a passage here, guys. It says, uh, if a man happens to meet a woman who is not pledged to be married and rapes her and they are discovered, he shall buy her, f- f- he shall give her father 50 shekels and give her a good life. Deuteronomy 28. Do you know what that's from? Uh, the Bible. Yep, the Bible. And it's Deuteronomy. Yep, Deuteronomy. So. Deuteronomy. Did I say it right? Deuter. Deuter. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Yeah. That's so if you rape anybody, Ross, you better make sure you pay that father and marry her. Well, okay. As long as she's not pledged to another man. Okay. I think you'll let you, I'm the last person you have to worry about raping anybody. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, the reason why I mentioned that, I, uh, a few weeks ago, I bought a book. Well, I go to Goodwill a lot, which for for any of our, you know, if any, I I don't know if Goodwill is international. It's a thrift store that has a lot of cool shit in it. I bought this book that was like a hundred pages on murderers. Sure, it's a second hand store. Yeah, a second hand store. So, and a lot of the money goes to the homeless, which is good, and they hire a lot of people who are uh, disabled, mentally challenged. So, so it, it's a really good. It's much better than a thrift store, actually, isn't it? Because a lot of the shit, too, they check for quality. Oh, know? yeah. And it, it uh, anyways, point is I found a book that uh, it was it was just a history of years of uh, murders and ev- everything fucked up, newspaper clippings. So I'm like, oh, you know, it would be cool to make a collage out of these just for the sake of art. And then I glued on. We're listening. Ross is making the trade, interrupting yeah, as is. usual. No, it's fine. We... Ooh. Who would interrupt us if Ross was in here? Do you need me to open it? Yes. So no, and uh, so yeah, we're uh, making this collage, just just kind of stating like what would you, I, I I don't know what I'm trying to state as you know it's art it's uh sure. I guess well you're a new homeowner you're looking for decor 
Yeah, I'm looking for. So I made this collage of different. For example, I grouped. I I I took all the newspaper clippings of terrorism, sure. and made a collage out of that. Then I made a collage out of all the rapes. Then I made a collage out of all the, like the lady killers, the women that go nuts, and, like murder their husbands over cheating or over money. Sure. So I made all these collages, and I thought it'd be cool to in the middle put a different Bible passages relating to that. For sure. example, a woman being a crazy serpent on the lady killers or. But, uh, rape being okay, you know, on the all the rape ones. And can I just interrupt real quick? Yeah, uh, it is so apparent that you grew up in a house with an interior designer. Like your oh, yeah. sense of style and fashion and decor is on point, right? What do you mean decor? Uh, like decoration, like you know, oh, God, your house is your temple, and it needs it's to not be hardcore. That no, oh, I got that. Yeah, decor is slightly different from hardcore. Yes, or soft core. Well, so are you proud of me? Yes. One of these days, you got to do a house tour to your podcast because you your whole setup house tour. Is, what do so, you think? Because I think your setup here is in, especially in your basement. It's very. What very, do you think, Bill? Then I I can't tell if you're being serious. I am. I'm being serious. I, I love the. In the what space. about you, Bill? Honestly, what I think our podcast needs is just raw singing more. Raw singing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I. I, I First time I heard, it, I thought you meant raw singing. <laughs> well, when yeah. Ross sings, it's raw yep. singing. That shit is raw, yo. <laughs> Absolutely. But all right, so you're working on this collage. So yeah, and, and I'm like, well, how am I gonna, you know, make this any more disturbing with uh, with these Bible passages? So I bought a uh, cow's blood from a deli. <laughs> you could just to, buy cow's blood. I I don't think it's legal. I I actually I don't know if I if I told did I tell you this Ross? Did I tell you. I don't. You told me a lot. I can't remember every shit you okay. told me. Okay. Well, it's it's just a yes or no question. On the cow's blood. The yeah. answer is no. Keep okay. going. No. Okay. Go ahead. Anyways, I bought this cow's blood and I wanted to paint with it. My buddy at work said, "No, dude, that shit doesn't work. I have skulls on my porch and I cut into myself. I know about blood." Uh, so I didn't believe him, and <laughs> that's a really odd conversation to have at work. Yeah, yeah, we get along great. You know, it's an employee sure. relationship. Yeah, no, he sounds super healthy and well adjusted. Have him on the podcast, he he doesn't want to be. He's he's. Uh, I don't get why people are so shy about this at all. It's he just, he wants to be. He's one of those guys that's uh, really. Um, you know how we're black metal fans. Absolutely. He is not. Oh, I'm sorry for saying black metal again, Ross. By the way. No, no, he is nuts about that and the culture. He's a huge metalhead, but he wants to be one of those people. I don't, I don't get him to be honest. He, uh, he laughs about dark humor. All his whole st- he does stand up, and all his stand up is about him hating himself. But he does not. He want. He wants. Apparently, we're not professional enough for him. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I, I didn't mean to lay it down. So, so, I, so I buy. So I called. I was trying to get this cow's blood, and I accidentally. I'm like, okay, where can I? I I heard that there's certain cultures. I don't know if it was Jewish or Polish where they boil it, or or no. Yeah, I I think I asked you before if they make they make like blood pudding and. Sure. Yeah, blood sausage. It's not that. Yeah. Uncommon. Yeah, I've had blood sausage is fucking great. Uh, I love that shit. I agree. And um, I had it before. Yeah, it's it's Shh. awesome. You think you're so cool, Ross, eating your blood sausage. Oh, here we go again. Bill, Mr. Bill is talking shit. Last time he was quiet. Now he's like. Here we go again. Ross talking shit about Mr. Bill talking shit about Ross. All right. Here we go again. <laughs> Phil explaining how Bill is talking shit about Ross, talking shit about Bill, talking shit about oh, Ross. He, God damn it. No, and so I uh, I call. I, I heard that you can get it from a local deli. Just ask him, yo, man, you know, I need some blood. We're going to boil some shit. I called. By I just looked up GPS nearest local deli, not corporatized. Ended up being Indian, which I forgot. The cow is kind of sacred in India. Sure. And he just started screaming at me, thought it was a prank call. He said, no, this is illegal. No, no it is. we cannot do this. No. So what, what kind of meat do they serve at an Indian deli? Honestly, I'm I'm not sure I, because I didn't go there. I ended sure. Up, uh, <laughs> we, we should call him again. Yes. What you kind wanna, of? You want to play call him? 
Well, they're not Come open on. right now. Ross, you know prank calls aren't nice from the amount of prank calls I, you know, went t- towards you. Yeah. You made it so obvious. I knew it was you. Uh, okay. Boys will be boys. It so it's so it's okay if the next podcast we go over my prank call archive, right? I would love to see that. Okay. Awesome. Anyways, so then I called uh like Felicia, some local Italian, and I'm like uh Deli. They're like, oh yeah, well how much you need? And I'm like, uh, I don't. I, how much blood do you need to paint with? You know, I don't want to ask that. <laughs> oh yeah, my. So so I just I had to. Uh, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm just writing out a few Bible I mean, passages. I mean, how I much mean, blood do you think yeah, I need? Yeah, I'm actually making some, uh, sure. you know, home decor with this blood, <laughs> just splattering it all over the yeah, place. I'm sure it's a call they get every day. Yeah, with, 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 with those black, 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 black metal bands. What, what did he? You, what did he get those blood from? You get it from Delhi. You get pig's blood or cow's blood, like I'm doing. So it's like, how much blood do they buy? It's like a, a lot fucking of ga- gallons, gallons. It, does that shit add up? It's like, what do you mean? Does it add up to what? It's like how much are they spending? A whole on slice that? of love for Ross? Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> oh yeah. No, seriously, <laughs> I, I watch a lot of these. You know, the band we're seeing. How you say it again? The band we're seeing. Watain. Watain. Yeah. yeah. Those shows are like oof. covered in blood. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, anyways, yeah, I, I, they, uh, it's, it's really cheap and it's really easy. They just drain everything and squeeze it out of the ribs hanging in the freezer, you know, and they, they drain. And so, so yeah, he's like, how much, how much you need? And I go into my joyzy accent because, oh yeah, my ma, she boils shit with it. I don't know. Oh, no, I, she needs like it. Ross. I'm a, yeah, with yeah. Joyzy. I'm, do, I'm doing my Dino Bosco there. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. She's making some crazy soup. She said she need blood. Hey, you, I say, what you need a blood for? Tell me, you know. And she, so they're just, they're just like, well, the most I can give you is a. How, how early can you be here? And I'm like, I don't know, ten minutes. So he gave me a pint for like two dollars. I try painting with it. Look at that shit. Look at it right there. Look at that. You well, see that, Ross? Yeah. Dude, that looks like a melted Twix bar, man. <laughs> that, look, that looks somebody shat in their hand and fucking tried to paint with it. Blood, don't paint with cow's blood, okay? Don't do it. And and that guy at my work who cuts himself and hates his life, he told me he's like, don't do it, man. Don't. You know how much it's, how hard it is too, because it, especially when it's coming from the freezer and like an all. If, uh, the reason why they don't, I found out the reason why they don't sell it is because it's really easy to catch diseases easier. And it usually farmers, they'll slit a cow's neck and drink it right away when it's warm because those cells are still alive. Wait, farmers will? Yeah. Is that I, what you said? They'll yeah, drink it right away? Right after they slit the throat. I don't know what they'll, article I was reading, but. They'll drink the blood yeah, right away. Yeah. And they actually, it lives. They let they let it heal up and, and then they, they just do it again like next week. Oh, hey. Hey, Moosey, come over here and slit their neck again. So for all of our fans out there, Ireland or elsewhere, <laughs> if you're thinking about doing arts and crafts with blood, maybe maybe reconsider Yeah, because it's just going to look like shit, literal it shit. Yeah. On hardest paper. part, hardest part, every stroke you make, you need to re-dip the blood because... That was I, I was seeing living and and dead. When it's in the freezer, it gathers a lot of moisture. So you literally every stroke. You know how when you make an H, it's like three strokes. You need to fucking re dip it each stroke. I should have gotten some antique pen and filled the ink, you know, the the container with the blood, so it'd be easier to paint it out. But anyways, yeah. What did you tell Kelly? Like, oh honey, I'll be back. Just going to the deli, getting oh. some blood. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I didn't let her know that part. I just, I just, I just let her when it was, do- let her know when it was done. She's like, "This looks like a murderer's basement." I'm like, "It's art, it's art, okay." You just Every, don't uh, get me. Yes, this is, this is a different. Don't you know that this is supposed to be about the intergalactic, you know, di- space hole? Oh, and bringing Star Wars back yep. to the discussion. Yep. Yeah. It, no, I just, I, I don't, I, I think it, what it. In my opinion, you know, it's art. It means whatever it means to you. I think all those clips of of various murders, you know, it just shows you what this world is actually like, and and that that's the shit's been around for years. Like that, the the one I was gonna make. I think I told you I was gonna make a weird collage 
where there was a guy uh, <laughs> a weirder collage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We, we, weird than weird themed. Sure. And and <laughs> there was a death where a guy, um, his dad was a ex marine i think he had like his legs blown off or something and and so he was i don't know maybe paralyzed whatever he was paralyzed for some reason and <clears throat> his son had a landmine and he programmed his electric wheelchair to go right into the mine so and that and that's how he killed him and this all sounds morbid and like maybe oh, a but little it's, weird but it's dazzling but well not only is it dazzling but it's super popular like we're doing a podcast now. It's it's Mr. Phil, Mr. Bill, Mr. Ross sitting in a basement just shooting the shit. Yep. But a lot of my coworkers listen to podcasts and I guess there's a really insanely popular genre of podcasts specifically about murder. Is and, there? And homicide. Yeah. And I'll overhear my coworkers just very, very casually talking about like, oh my God, did you hear the episode about this axe murder? Or did you hear the one where the guy acts like a mannequin and then kills the girl? Is that Say Nothing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, Say Nothing, the mannequin. Dude, we, we should put Say Nothing, right, the mannequin, that thing right there. You should put it... Put uh, it... Because I could need a break that would again because be, I need to use the bathroom again. You got to piss again? <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, I'm but just I, saying. I got, a little more longer. It, I, not, don't want to interrupt, but you're going to interrupt Bill's story again. That, Thank you, Ross. No, it's it's not that good of a story, but, like, I don't know. People like murders. Murders are interesting. Yeah. So, like, I say more power to you decorating your basement with articles about, you know, like, people well, I'm, steering I'm gonna, their dads into landmines. I, I, I think I, I think I'm going to make other cool... I, th- I think it's going to be a cool thing to just make a themed collage. I was going to do one, like, Spongebob or Minecraft or... Uh, the other thing I was going to do, I have a shitload, like, fucking 13 crates of just DVDs that the people who lived here had. And who the fuck uses DVDs anymore? Why not make, like, a 90s kids... Uh, m- 90s movies kids uh collage of like three ninjas surf ninjas cool runnings you know uh matilda you know oh man and then write a you know bible passage in blood that has to do with that i was gonna say that's all gonna clash with the theme you have going on here yeah can Uh, you name the the three ninjas the three ninjas yeah i don't Uh, i don't think obviously huey louie and dewey (laughs) can you name them colt montant Tom Tom. One more, one more. <laughs> Wait, the one, the Cult? second one's name was Montan Tantan. No, the the, the younger was was, was Tom Tom. Okay, so Colt Tom-tom. Tom Tom. And Rocky. Rocky, yeah, 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 Rocky. There we go. Sure. How about Double Dragon? I thought that I I don't remember that movie at all, but there's people who bring it up to me all the time. Wait, like the video game? No, there was a movie for Double Dragon. Oh, that was that was. A Wait, did the movie it come sucked, first right? or did the game come first? The game came first, and then yeah, and then the movie sucked. That's weird. That's a movie based on a video game not being good. That's what is yeah. that? I never heard a thing. It's like, what can anybody just say? Mention a bad video game movie. It's like a bad video game movie. Yeah, every know, single one that's ever been made. Yeah, yeah. I'm being very sarcastic, so you just ruined my joke. Oh. Uh-huh. How about how about Super Mario Brothers? Oh my <laughs> shit! <laughs> that was a fucking great movie. Yeah, that was a that, genius. That, that fungus growing around everywhere yeah. with Dennis Hopper with his punk hair. I was like, "What the hell is this?" That, oh, I love that. I I was pissed since I was a kid that Luigi doesn't have his mustache. Fucking John Leguizamo. What was that? What does he have? A phobia of facial hair. Couldn't grow a mustache for that role. No. Can you do? You love the movie The Pest. Oh yeah. Yes. I love that movie. Yeah. Number, right. Number classic. How about? Do you remember Mr. Nanny? Absolutely. <laughs> that was fucking yes. great. Now we're so in our age about talking. I about love movies. that movie. With Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Yeah. And you and you know? Do you guys know anything about that movie? About about uh, uh, what's his name? Joe Hansen. What the fuck is his first name? You know Than you know Thanatos, the no. guy the guy with the metal cap. Yes. He's 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 the singer of New York Dolls, a punk band. No kidding. Yeah, and he and he wrote all the music for that for that movie. He kept on uh, talking. Wait, of Mr. Nanny? Yeah, 
That's hilarious. He's the guy who made, he's, uh, well, no, he was in New York Dolls. Okay. Uh, what the fuck is his name? Something Johansson. Mitch. Uh, Paul. Mitch, Paul. John. Mike. I'm thinking maybe Scott Johansson. Tyler. What the fuck is his name? Hang on, let's. Fucking after this, can I take you, a pee break? No, please? you absolutely can You cannot. absolutely can We're going to interrupt your tea, pee break. Who was the lead singer of the New York Dolls? David Roger Johansson. David Johansson. David yeah. David Roger Johansson is an American singer, songwriter, and actor. Yes. And then, so so he, David Johansson, and he he was a New York. You never heard that song, Personality Crisis? No, I know New York Dolls. Oh, okay. And then and then you know what he did after, right? Mister Nanny, obviously. Well, 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 he went solo where he made uh his his uh artist name was Buster Poindexter. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, the, that's the, him. The hot, 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 hot. hot yeah, that's and hilarious. Th- and that's why it, just picture hot, 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 and the the music uh, and Mister Nanny. So that that's that's him. Fucking, that's so funny. Yeah. So that was and then and and you know you know my friend at work got offended because I was talking about nineties movies like this. I mentioned Mister Nanny. He's like, no, what the fuck is you're not a nineties kid if you don't know Ghost Dad. I'm like. <laughs> Wait, Go who the fuck like that movie? Bill Cosby, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who the fuck? Who the fuck watched that movie? Was that ever when, when you watched it, Ross? I don't ever remember. You know what? All these movies we're mentioning, I remember going in a fucking video store and it was gone, and you got to wait the next week. Ghost Dad is is probably still nobody took off the shelf of that piece of shit. Like what the fuck? I don't know. Whatever. There's my rant. All right. Anyway, Ross is gonna go pee. No, let's keep talking about 90s movies. We're interrupting his pee. All right, perfect. I, I, I can't hold it. All right, yes, you can. Anyway, Ross, Star Wars. Mm. I feel like Darth Vader was really the good guy all along. What do you think? XV, yes. What? I agree. Okay. I think the Jedi 100% had Yeah. How about, how about Surf Ninjas, guys? Oh, my God. Wait, surf, wait really is that different than Surf Nazis? Wait. What? All right. We'll take a quick break. Okay. Quick break. Yeah. Ross, go pee. Get fucked up, dude. All right. And we are back. And good news for all of our listeners and viewers out there. Uh, Ross is about to entertain us with his German accent impression. Ross, take it away. Do it! I don't remember asking you to stop, Ross. That's all I got. No, that's all the, it's... That's all the Ramstein I can remember at the top of my head. Führer Roscoe. Yeah. Yeah, the most um, the sister side. You know, you know, we're gonna be accused of being Nazis at this point. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but we're, but we're not. We're just some assholes who spill beer on each other, and well, actually, that's only Ross, and and he's the one speaking German. It happens all the time. Well, no, um, Ross, no more cigars for me. I'm, it's a yes or no question. It's all good. No pressure. Can, can I have another cigarette, Bill? Yeah. Okay. Please. So a- ask me in thirty minutes. Actually, so. actually, you you know, it reminds me. It's funny because I never really liked the German language. I think it's just kind of it's right back. It doesn't man. flow well. You know how people think Wait, French is like. Phil, hang yeah. on. How does it go, Ross? It's Mitch. It's Miss Nitch. You gotta pull it's the mic closer. It's Mitch. You gotta pull pull it closer every time you get louder. It's Mitch. It's Miss It's Nitch. You gotta you gotta move it up this and down slowly. From from the from the head to the top. Yeah. While you're, I'm while you're not saying. joking and off. Well, you stopped doing the German accent. Come on, man. I'm doing was, this. I'm done. So, Phil, you said your complaint was with the German accent. Oh. But quite clearly, we all love it. Ross just did a fine example. I just don't think it flows well. For sure. But, you know what people how how people think of like the French uh, French language or maybe I don't know Italian. I I don't know of Greek maybe, but um. Well, I feel like French and Spanish and Italian and maybe even Portuguese fall under the category of Romance languages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, German and Russian in particular have always, to me, sounded a little guttural. 
How about yeah. Dutch? What about Dutch, Ross? How does Dutch sound? I don't know, but I hear even Dutch people say that the language is very dirty. Very dirty? Hard. Can you do an impression of a Dutch accent? No. Oh. I want you to just try. Don't give up, Ross. No. Uh, But also say Sweden. You know who's Dutch? Who? The the drummer of Metallica. So Mm -hmm. what I'm thinking is just... I'm so I Fuck think you, that Napster is uh, it's a very complex situation where they they shouldn't be stealing music. You know, it's uh, it's it's our right. Fuck them. Fuck them. I don't know if that sounds more like Jerry Seinfeld. I don't know if I've ever heard you do that impression before. That really caught me off guard. Actually, it's pretty uh. Pretty true. on point. Yeah. Oh, like. Does Lars Ulrich really yeah, so much? He really man? talks it's like this. He thinks he's all awesome. He talks like this. It's like Metallica is the greatest band on the face of the earth. I, I, I don't know what Dave Mustaine's problem is. He uh, he became an alcoholic after Metallica. What can I say? We're the best. You know what? Well, fuck s- you. Go kill yourself. You know what about Mega about, death. <laughs> you know what I say about Lars? Stop using the snare drums. Every drum, you say, like, snare drums. This, din, 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 din. He does he do this, din, din, din. Is that, is that an impression of Lars yes. or the snare drums? I just say, hey, how, how much he use the snare drums? Din, 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 din. One, one bass drum. All which, right, which song is that that you're doing right now? I think it's Enter the sna- Sandman. Do it, do it. No, but the mic can't hear. Yeah. You got to do the no, the mouth. Come on, you're killing me right now. I, I I'm not a professor of drama, so I can't do it. I'm not killing you. Metallica's killing you. Yeah, it's like all I hear is Metallica, the same drama. Lars is gonna hear this shit. Yeah, yeah well, Lars can suck my bit. Well, I, I don't think Ross can handle my drumming, and he's just full of shit. And he's not, he's he's not even doing a good impression. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lars Ulrich, we're calling you out. <laughs> Here we are on Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing, <laughs> just doing our Lars Ulrich impressions because yep. that's apparently how you sound. Is, uh, I'm I'm skeptical. Does he really sound like that? Does he, he, he does sound like that. I no. He remi- Honestly, he reminds me of the Carner family, even though people don't know that, but who that is. But he does. He sounds exactly like like Damon, to be honest. Uh, Damon does not sound like. Oh well, you know. I, well, was, well, uh, 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 Damon sounds more like this. Well, well, I, I guess Damon and Jerry Seinfeld mixed <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> That's, all right. So hopefully next episode we can get Lars Ulrich on the phone and <laughs> decide once and for all <laughs> how do you sound. I will fucking battle. Uh, yeah, um, you, that, that's odds. that's your that's your job, Ross. You gotta yeah, get Lars. Ross, his. will you talk to him? I was taught the shit out of Lars. It's just like. How are you and Metallica, one of the best famous metal band, and you one of the worst bands in metal? I think it's because they were recorded one of the best. Because I, I recently got into Bathory, which they say, like, oh, that's what everybody stemmed from, you know, the, the whole black metal thing. And they sound really fucking good. And if they had the money to put out something like Kill Them All or Ride the Lightning, they would be a lot bigger. Well, and because they're, you can't understand what the fuck they're singing. So, is that a bad thing? It doesn't. It's make not it a bad thing for no. you and me, but but for you, that's why a lot of people like Metallica more. Not to mention, they're you know Bathory singing about nothing but goats and black magic, and Metallica's sure. singing about more something that I guess related more to the whole eighties crowd. Or I, don't and I have no idea what the hell Metallica lyrics about. I never looked it up. Do you know? A lot of them are war, unforgiven memory remains. The one, Ma- pretty much anything on Master of Puppets, right, or uh, Injustice for All. So I saw three of the big, the big, uh, the big uh, four. Uh, un- and uh, wait, who are the big four? Uh, Anthrax, Slayer, Metallica, and Megadeth. I saw three of them. In- wait, um, Iron Maiden isn't part of the same. I think they're more um, heavy metal. Does it? Do- wait, is this? Wait, Anthrax isn't heavy metal. That's still the that um, last metal scene. Ross, I, I think w- this is really arbitrary. I think you're just making this up. I don't think there Look is a big the four. Big, the big four. I think Phil knows what I'm talking about. The big I have four. no idea what you're talking about. You don't, So the big four. Anthrax, Metallica, Slayer. Are you talking about Brad's fingers right now? Ah, uh, come on. We were having a nice talk about music. Oh, uh, all right. 
You know what? Don't bring him up, Brad, because they, they, um, him and his wife and his uh stepson bring me a beautiful, send me a beautiful Christmas card. How old is the stepson? A beautiful Christmas card. Yeah. How old That's is the where, stepson? Uh, he's gonna be ten. Oh my God! Is he cute? Almost, almost as cute as the the great Gavin. Does he have mm. the? Don't go there. Don't Stop. go there. Okay. Stepson, uh, not a real, not the real son. Okay. Yeah. So that'd be a weird coincidence if he did. I, oh, oh my God! I just realized what the fuck happened. <laughs> oh, never mind. Could you do me a favor? <laughs> what? I, I I would never talk anything bad about Gavin. Which I will never talk bad about, you know, Aiken. You know, there's a fine line. Aiken? Aiken. Aiken. Aiken? Yeah, his name is Aiken. You know, it's talk, it's talk about, you know, the kids, you know. Well, uh, why wouldn't you? There's nothing better. He's an awesome kid, Aiken. You know. Who, what, I'm not talking bad about him. I don't even know his name. <laughs> Bring him up. It's Aiken. Aiken. You're the one who brought him up. Why are you talking bad about Aiken? I'm not. I, I love the kid to get to death. I was talking about you. Said I. I. I got a Christmas card from from three of them. I just don't want to yeah. talk crap about them at the moment. Okay. Did he take Brad's last name? Or is he? No. I. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to. Keep so you. So we just interrupted to talk about Ross's topic, but we're not going to talk about it. This is hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. Exactly right. Anyway, back to the big four, which is not a thing, Ross. All right, I, Ross has to check his phone. Anyways, can I can I mention something? Yeah, please. Side, side I think story. Ross is looking up the big four. Is he? Were you? Yes, I proved my point. Okay. okay. The big While you're four. proving your point, Phil, you have something to say. Oh, so um, just let me let me let me. I'm not that stubborn. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, I got to mention something real quick before I forget it. So, for those of you who know me, for those of you who don't. Maybe I'll give a little uh, intro about myself, but you do you uh, for anybody who doesn't. I, I I heard recently about a lot. I, I've heard about it ever since I entered the psychedelic scene about sensory deprivation tanks, flotation tanks, mm-hmm. and isolation tanks. Um, it's supposed to be amazing for anxiety, for depression. It just really gives you a. Uh, I think it sort of gives you a jolt into. Um, Sort of like an acid type out of body experience, uh, experience like DMT would, or from what I've heard. Tomorrow I have an appointment for one of these. Really? Yep. Like a float tank? Or yeah, a float tank. And uh, me and Kelly are going. It was. Uh, it's kind of like a small uh, Christmas present. I really wanted to go, and I wanted to mention this because you guys can all tell slightly a little bit uh, well you guys maybe maybe some of the listeners can tell what kind of person i am maybe by my hand gestures maybe by my talk what type of anxiety i may have what type of whatever whatever the hell productive you know traits whatever i, I creativity uh flaws if i'm a little bit jittery or have some a- anxiety which i do so i want I-, I want you guys to tell me if i lose my fucking mind for the next episode when after the experience i actually i actually made a video of uh just giving an intro about myself i think because people people don't know about this shit you know you guys are, are you guys aware of it about like flotation the sensory takes. deprivation yes shit yeah yes, I don't yes. Understand. ross doesn't ross you doesn't down do you, do you do you understand bill mm-hmm oh, so uh they put you, you in a coffin yeah yeah <laughs> And yeah. they put you in like a saline solution, so you're buoyant, and you just float there with like no sound, no sight. Yeah. And you're like just floating, and it's supposed to be like, not like a religious experience, but like an out of body like. It's it's very close to that was, acid. That the, was the per- a Sim- Simpson episode. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. yes. And then winds up on like the highway, right? Yes, I do know what you're talking about. Yes. Now. You gotta that pull shit. it mic closer. Yes, it was that, that was Just Simpson. pull it closer, man. What are you so scared of? That was a Simpson episode. Yeah. You have your anxiety issues, I have mine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you get you get put in a, I think it's like a hundred pounds of salt makes you float. And you're in there for you can pick how long we're going for an hour and a half. It was a Groupon deal to go, and 
yeah, you, from experiences that I've heard, uh, I guess the word that I would use is a summary of everything that I've heard is after about 20 minutes that you're in there, you either really, really tweak out or you go through some crazy, insane shit. And what that means is that, you know, for the first 20 minutes, you're just thinking about normal things. Okay, I'm locked in this coffin, floating. It's room, it's body temperature. So it isn't, it isn't relaxing, but it isn't not, it isn't uncomfortable. So it sort of feels like you're in space and you sort of mentally, spiritually disappear. And after about 20 minutes, instead of thinking about things like obligations or your everyday life, you start thinking about who you are, maybe start playing back some situations you do. Maybe I'll start playing back about how I made fun of Ross spilling beer on his shirt, even though I, it was my fault, you know? And then you point, no point is that you start thinking about your actions and yourself and about who you are and what you can contribute to this world. And I think it's probably good that I read these summaries and know what to expect sure. instead of just freaking out because uh, just quickly ending, I used to smoke weed. I think you know my bill, my binges, where I wouldn't smoke it regularly, but I would have a shitload at once because I wanted to fucking tweak out, have a horrible fucking bad trip, and then just empty all my negativity. I looked at myself as like a, I don't, I don't even know what the fuck you call it, like a like a car that never changes its oil. Once you you just keep it going and going and going, and eventually it's gonna explode and just spill. Sure. Um, I don't know. I'm aware of that, like, sort of treatment. I know that's a thing. Yeah. I... Skeptical? Like, I'm not skeptical. Like, you know, different strokes for different folks. Like, I, it doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. Like, I've... And I'm sure... I don't know if you guys have been through this. I imagine you have. But, like, a full body MRI. Like, yeah. Like, that's... And I'm not claustrophobic at all. Yeah. But, like, I'm not about to pay someone to lock me in a chamber where I can't move. But also, I don't feel like I need it. Not to yeah, say yeah. that I'm not enlightened or or not to say that I am enlightened or that. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I've got all this anxiety built up in me. Yeah. And I just need a release or anything. It's just like, nah. Like, I don't even really care for massages. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, I, like, I don't know. I just chill. I do my thing. Uh, Zach and I were, my friend Zach Trekker and I were looking into doing something like that many, many years ago. Isolation tanks. Yeah, and it's just like, eh. Eh. I, yeah. think, I think for sure I'll do it once in my life, but it's not at all like something I'm looking forward to or... Or like something looking. I feel like I need, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, if you, you know, I feel like if you're, for example, I was trying to tell my mom, I'm like, listen, it might mend things between you and me if you tried one of these, you know, just to sort of be, because I know she's got a lot of emotional issues that would sort of help her out, that would sort of help her, uh, you know, you know the whole, everybody knows that old school generation of our parents where it's sort of like, even if you have fucking issues, there's just shit you don't bring up. Sure. And, and, and I, and you know, there's been many times where it's like, I know there's a lot of shit that you want to say to me and I want to say to you that we could say in like a group therapy session and they're too, they have too much pride to do that. So I feel like something like an isolation tank might be the answer where it's sort of like, we don't see their, you know... Uh, I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for. Uh, their, closure. Yeah, they're, they're, they're uh <laughs> some comfort. Some Everybody has their 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 own rapture, their personal rapture. Sure. You know? Everybody has clothes of life, you know. Yeah. You know, you know, bottom bottom inside, you want to release it, and, you know. Oh, yeah, but s plans. some some issues people just want to take to the grave because. Yeah. I I don't know. They 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 watch too much fucking TV and they're just like, "No, I'm going to get the last laugh," you know. And it's just I don't know. Well, what if, what if I got you a gift card? And here here's what I'm saying. I I feel like it's worth trying it out. Like, well, for example, would you give a shit about 
going to well like uh i remember we mentioned about the chicago tours and you're like ah navy piers that's one of the worst places i would recommend you know yeah yeah and if i was like well what if for free i take you on the best things ever you haven't seen these things if it's if it's like oh hey man this guy's saying he's got the best of the best. Would you give it? A, would you give it a shot just for shits and giggles? Absolutely. And if it was a gift, like yeah, I'll do anything. Yeah. if it's a gift, because that, who am I to object? And the the reason why I, why I'm asking that, the the reason why I'm asking that is because I feel like, uh, with the isolation take, I didn't really want to do it. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, man. For anybody wondering, it's sixty bucks for your first float. And they say usually, um, if you if you if you don't know what the fuck is going on, if you're not into spirituality or like a tree hugging hippie, like you know us, we're we're in a music a lot. If you don't know, if, if you're just some Wait. fucking business person who well, doesn't, you know, how much is it for sixty minutes though? It, yeah, it's sixty. It, it's it's sixty uh, bucks for an hour and a half. Oh, hour and a half okay. is the most you can go. Okay. That's the first flotation. Okay. And and. Uh, because I've read about it a lot, I'm going to do it to my full extent, and I feel like uh, it would be something worth doing, especially if it was a gift, knowing how to do it to the full extent. Sure. You know, you got to you gotta have earplugs in. You got to have, uh, you know, uh, it, it, you have to, some people, uh, I heard, I guess there's a difference between the tank and the pod because the tank, they just, it's open. Like it's literally just a hole in the fucking ground. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm. So, so, so a, a tank is literally, I think it from what I've read is it sort of looks like just a jacuzzi that's elongated, like a okay. rectangle, and then and and it's obviously it's uh, ten inches off because that's where you're floating in, but then a float uh, a pod looks kind of like what's in the Matrix, okay. <laughs> but but it's um a pod a pod is. I'm trying to think of what it looks like. You know those, you know those uh, things you s- you scratch your dry feet off with. That fucking thing, the the little handle, kind of looks like that. Like a pumice stone. Not not a, not a stone. Like the the one with a with like a cheese grater on it. No. Okay, I don't know. Ke- Kelly has one, and it's not pleasant to be around <laughs> when it's. Huh? No, but and, no. And, and anyways, the the pod looks like uh, I don't know what to compare it to. It, it's 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 like an it's like an alien alien resurrection you know how she, she's flushed in the pod yeah well picture that with no windows okay and some people say that it's a different experience because in the pod the door closes on you and you can actually choose whether you want it closed or not and the reason why that makes a difference is because some of them don't have uh i forgot what the system is if it's humidity or something some of them can distract you from your experience because the vapor goes to the ceiling and it drips during while you're in there. Okay. So, interesting. See, I would think the pod would be more like the more holistic. You know, like here you are. Yeah. This coffin of meditative bliss. Yeah. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. You know what I I don't like is that I feel like it's getting a lot more popular now, and because of that, there's places that are corporatizing it. Like, for example, the place I'm going to. It's got all this shit on the Groupon. It's just like free massages, but you got a tip. Free wine, but you got a tip. It's like, dude, who the fuck? You're going here for a spiritual experience. Why would you want to be drunk out of your fucking mind? People go there you know? jog. Well, well, they got free wine. You know, it, it's kind. I feel like it's gonna. It might turn into like a bro hangout type thing. Well, so here's my comment. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're worried about something being too corporate, like. You're not buying tickets for that shit on Groupon, because if you're getting a Groupon for it, oh yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Like true, and I'm not like I don't think something becoming corporate or incorporated is a bad thing. Like I think in situations like that, the consumer wins. Mm -hmm. But you can't say like, man, I hope this shit doesn't sell out. Oh, you've already got a. Group on, yeah, for it, yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah, I feel like yeah. that ship's already sailed. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not so much. It, it's not the idea of selling out. It's more like it's sort of like uh, it ruins the, um, I guess, original idea of it. Sure. It, it sounds like it's C- like com- comparing it to like if you listen to Piper Gates at dawn, you, you know, 
<laughs> and then suddenly in 2017, they're like, no, we're going to remaster that and have somebody like whatever, Skrillex do it. It sounds like how Hookah w- was like 15 years ago. It, it wasn't a thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you know I was reading about Hookah recently and like the, the highest population of Hookah users are, are white people? Yeah. Was was you know wisdom? It was like you know chill it out, you know smoking a little hookah. Yeah, and now it's like it's like a thing. It's yeah. like and we, a lot of things nowadays. Like it, it gets to a trend, and, and you know. Yeah. I I don't want to I I don't want people to that's the word I was looking for I don't want people to exploit the original meaning for it. Right. Kind of like how Dark Side of the Moon is is a good album for personal reasons yeah. but then people are just like oh you know this is the best thing i can tap my foot to on in fucking traffic I, i'll say anything is popular you know bands or music yeah if you like you know pink floyd name 10 songs or, or eight songs if you if you're a pink floyd fan you can name you know yeah uh, but my argument is why does it matter like is popularity a bad thing no like, no you know what i mean but nowadays it's it's about you know everything with like pop a country like I said like last time I don't understand why everybody you know well, gra- it, gravitates to something like well when when something is mass produced it loses its value or quality yes you know it's sort of like if you got milk from a local farmer compared to like Dean's that just mass produces it and that and, and you know. Sure, but I think that. Or if you got beer from a local brewery compared to something like fucking Miller Lite. Right, but I think that's apples and oranges because at one point, I'm sure way back when, Miller Brewing was just like the local joint. Yeah. You know? And then it just got like, that's the dream. You know, yeah, like you go to these breweries and you think the the owner of the brewery is like, I hope we never get popular. I hope we never sell a bottle in grocery stores. I hope we just have this one really small facility and I hope no one ever likes what we do. Like, no, I think everyone person or like every person's ambition is to be like those titans, those corporate monoliths oh yeah and, yeah and you know what i mean so like i know like popularity is kind of like a bad word or it's a little taboo but that's like that's all you want like shit man if i owned like i don't know what you call them like a massage no it's not a massage parlor but like a therapy station where yeah. i've got these pods and i've got these tanks and yeah. I'm doing these float sessions, like you're goddamn right. I'm ready for people to come in to raise enough capital to open up a second location, and God willing, I'll have a massage envy across the country. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, and well, well, the I'm saying that the fact that they added a massage and wine is what's making it lose its quality because you're there to have a. It, uh, it's not so. It's I, I. I shouldn't use the word corporatized. It's like just oh here, here's some wine, here's some, you know, free massages. Why? I mean, why not add like a hooker? Why not add like an all-you-can-eat buffet in there too? See, like this and isn't now st- you're talking. Yeah, and that's pretty attractive. I don't know. It's the way I kind of feel about LSD, like acid in general. Yeah, like the first few times I took it, it was like a spiritual, religious journey. Mm-hmm. And then the more I took it, it's just like, no, nah, I'm just getting fucked up now. Yeah, like I know what to expect. Like I'm just, you know, like I'm not learning anything more about myself. I'm just looking to get high. Yeah, and so it kind of bastardizes the experience. And I think that's kind of what you're, yeah, yeah, the, talking what, what about. What I'm trying or, to like it cheapens it. Yeah. Or it just yeah. becomes like much less meaningful. Mm-hmm. But as a business owner, like it makes sense to to move yeah, to expand. Your concern isn't to like if you can you know, if you're trying to have your clients experience these profound moments like and people are willing to pay for it, like why not? 
Yeah. Like, open mm -hmm. up a second why not, shop. Why not make it if, as comfortable? Can I stop you right there?